Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google, joined by Serverless Expedition host Martin to help you modernize your apps running on one of our serverless compute platforms. In this and the next migration module, our little friend Porter will take you on a journey to migrate from App Engine pull queues to Cloud PubSub. App Engine has push queues too, right? I'm familiar with using push tasks to do extra work alongside my apps. Yep, and Module 7 covers how to use push queues, so check that video in CodeLab to learn that. Today, we're focused on pull queue migration. That said, this video won't feature any migrating at all. Oh, really, Wes? Why not? I thought this was the serverless migration video series. Uh, what's up with that? Well, you're always keeping me honest, Martin. Yes, usually Porter does take users from point A to point B, but here in Module 18, we need to take a detour first to reacquaint folks with App Engine pull tasks. We'll add their use to the Module 1 sample app, and then we can migrate to PubSub in Module 19. OK, I think I get it. Uh, we're taking one of our original Python 2 apps, adding App Engine pull tasks to it, and then migrate that app to PubSub? Yep, you got it, Martin. In Module 1, we already migrated from App Engine's Web App 2 framework to Flask, a popular framework in the Python community. While Web App 2 apps run on App Engine, Flask apps run on App Engine and most other hosting services, so you can move off of App Engine if you ever need to. Pause now to review the Module 1 video and its code lab to reacquaint yourself with that migration, because this module picks up from where that leaves off. Ah, yes, uh, I do remember that migration. Uh, so what are we going to use pull queues for in this sample app, Wes? Good question. The sample app currently registers all visits to the website and displays the most recent visits. One way we can enhance this app is by tracking visitors and showing who visits our site the most. That makes sense. So let's make our main app do this counting after registering a visit. That's a really good idea, but keep in mind that this type of counting is lower in priority. Serverless apps scale better when they respond as quickly as possible to the end user. Ah, that's right. Uh, the lower the latency, the better. Also, this is about task queues, so let's spawn a push task to do this counting on the side. Yep, that's a better idea. You already know that push tasks are pretty good with lower priority work that runs alongside your app. Furthermore, older App Engine apps must respond in less than a minute, and push tasks have an extended 10-minute deadline. But push tasks tend to run very soon after they're created, meaning they still have fairly high priority. Yeah, you're right. Uh, how do we make something even lower in priority than push tasks? Well, App Engine Task Queue also has pull tasks, and I think that's a better fit for this use case. For each visit, our app can just drop a pull task in a work queue. Then we can have a designated worker running periodically, grabbing all the pull tasks in the queue and batch processing them all. This worker can be a cron job or some other backend service. OK, I'm sold, Wes. Uh, let's use pull tasks. To be honest, I haven't used App Engine pull tasks before, and I actually even forgot App Engine had them. Uh, can I get my hands dirty and do it myself while you're showing us on screen? Absolutely. Grab your Module 1 Python 2 app if you did the code lab, or clone the repo or download the zip file if you didn't. Pause here if you need to do that. Module 1 is where we'll start. If you want to do this by hand with me now or on your own time, follow the Module 18 code lab. Ready? Let's go to the computer now and do this. For all migrations, we want to start with a working app, in this case, the Module 1 sample. Whether you use your code from doing the code lab or copying it from the repo, delete the lib folder if you have one and run the pip install command to install the third-party libraries into the lib folder. One benefit from upgrading to Python 3 is that you no longer have to do this self-bundling. In any case, run gcloud app deploy to upload to the cloud. The app should show the most recent visits, including the visit you just made. Now that we've confirmed it works, let's start tracking visitors with pull tasks. In many migrations, we start by modifying configuration files, but not this time. None of the existing configuration files need to be touched. They're fine as is. The only thing we need to do is create the pull queue, and that's done by adding a new file named q.yaml with these three lines. Creating the file isn't enough. We need to explicitly deploy this file to the cloud. Run gcloud app deploy, but with the q.yaml file name. This doesn't deploy the app itself. It just modifies the app's queue configuration. Moving on to main.py, let's update the imports and constants at the top. Import the task queue service and keep everything else. Pull tasks have to be leased for a certain amount of time, so we arbitrarily selected 1,000 tasks leased for an hour, so create constants for both. The app has always shown the top 10 most recent visits. With pull queues, we're also going to show the top 10 visitors, so we might as well create a constant for that. For lack of a better name, I named the pull queue, pull queue. 
and put those constants before instantiating the pull queue and flask app. The visit data model doesn't change, as does querying for visits and fetch visits. The only change required is in store visit. In addition to registering the visit, add a pull task with just the visitor's IP address so the worker can increment the visitor counter. To track visitors, we need a new data model. Visitor count tracks a visitor by IP address as its string and its counter as an integer. A new function fetch counts, queries, and returns the top 10 visitors in descending order of most visits. The next new chunk of code to add is for the worker to batch process all tasks sitting in the pull queue. The first half of log visitors tracks all the visitors in the queue and how many times they visited in this batch. With this hash of visitors and visit counts, the second half either creates a new visitor entry in data store or increments the existing counts there. Note the worker is called with a get request to the slash log endpoint. Finally, the main handler is updated so it calls both fetch visits and fetch counts. Then it sends the top visitors plus the most recent visits to the web template for rendering. The majority of the template stays the same, meaning rendering the most recent visits. Newly added is the list of top visitors and those are displayed at the top as a table showing visitor and corresponding visit counts. And those are all the changes to add use of pull tasks to the Module 1 sample app. To confirm your new Module 18 app works, replace the lib folder by deleting the old one and then running the pip install command to update all third-party dependencies. When all that's been done, run gcloud app deploy to deploy the app. You should now see a new table at the top showing the top visitors followed by the most recent visits. Now that looks great, but remember the visit you just created isn't part of the overall visitor count yet. There's a task awaiting execution in the pull queue. If you can, visit your app a few more times from different computers to get a good number of tasks in there. Again, you won't see any change in the app other than the most recent visits. Now let's run the worker. You can use a browser, but it's easiest to do a curl or wget command in a terminal. Regardless of which you use, hit the slash log endpoint and see the results showing how many visitors were logged. The next time you visit the app, the top visitors count should be updated. Congrats, you've now added visitor counts using pull tasks. Thanks for the tutorial, Wes. Since I've only used push tasks, a lot of this was new to me. Can you point me to where in the docs I can learn more about pull tasks? Yeah, the task queue overview is pretty useful and down below. You'll also find links to the docs for both push and pull queues. Cool, I'll take a look. Now that I got pull tasks usage in my app, what's next? Well, now that we have pull tasks in the app, we'll migrate to Cloud PubSub next in Module 19. If you want to read ahead, check out the links to the migration page as well as the Cloud PubSub documentation. You can also do the Module 19 code lab if you want to get a head start, or just check out the Module 19 code sample in the repo, and of course, the video. And we look forward to having you join us for Module 19 and moving to Cloud PubSub. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we hope to see you at that next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Happy travels! Mm -hmm.